Okay. We already come on. There we go. There we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we're going to be recreating another painting by another one of my favorite artists. Today's a bonus episode because this week we have been focusing on the art of Henri Matisse, Henry Matisse, I guess, if you that would be maybe the, my, my most English way of pronouncing it. Henri Matisse um, is would be in my top five favorite artists of all time. So that's why we're doing a whole week's worth of focus on this great artist. And today we're going to be looking at the the probably the most famous image that he did for a limited edition book that he created in 1947, about seven years before he passed away. This is The Fall of Icarus from the book Jazz. And this is like a seminal work in the in in of which was a long and super successful career for this artist. But this is probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous, of his cut out works. And uh, I want to try to approach this in a couple of different ways. One, I'm going to use tape to do it, and then another way, I'm actually going to cut paper and glue it on here. So two different approaches which are gonna to yield to very similar but different artworks. And so I'm really excited to, to, to see which one works best for this process. Okay, so if you're watching uh, right now, uh, I just wanna sort of outline the, the order of, uh, <laughs> of, of that we're gonna progress here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get an image onto the canvas. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do my image transfer process. Very simple, straightforward. And then we're gonna apply some color onto this painting to get it started. And we're gonna paint some paper as well simultaneously so that things can start drying. And while they're drying, we're gonna talk a little bit about the biography of uh, Alhi Matisse. Now we talked about it over the last couple of days already. So really I think we're just gonna spend time looking at the, the jazz itself. Uh, the the book jazz not the whole music genre and then we're gonna start we probably won't follow any of the, these typical steps that we do for most other paintings because we're gonna be doing it kind of un, in a un, non-traditional fashion and then of course the very end we're gonna do our side-by-side -side comparison and you can compare them and see which ones you like best so of course, just remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and upload a photograph of your artwork to the Facebook group so that we can see how it turned out. And as well, if you wanna make a donation, here's a few suggested ways you can give as little as a dollar just to help keep the show up and running. Because uh, each episode takes me about eight hours or so to put together, so there's a lot of extra work going on in behind the scenes here. So as mentioned, Let's uh, just look at the Facebook group here, and I encourage you to, to join and to, to upload your work because in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna go through everything as I do once a month and give people feedback on their art, and that's free should you wish to participate in that. Okay, so the next, so the first thing we're gonna do is get do the image transfer process. And you, certainly today's image is relatively straightforward that you could do it uh, without using a template, right? Because you could sketch this out with, within reason relatively quickly. Uh, but I did do an outline on my iPad Pro using the Procreate app. And so I just outlined this so that you can print it out just as I have on my uh, inkjet printer here at home. Right, you can print it out on a photocopier, at a printing place, print, you know, print shop, or a laser jet printer, photocopy printer. It doesn't matter. All we need is is the lines on there that we can we can trace. You could even take a piece of tracing paper or clear plastic, put it on your computer screen, draw the image, and then take that and use it for this next step here. So I'll show you to, if you want to use the outline. There's a folder. Uh, the, in the description below called uh, the Dropbox folder for the templates and outlines. And you're gonna see all of these subfolders. There's 141 of them currently. 
about 130 of them have images that we've already done. We have made a lot of paintings over the past few years. These are All of these are full. Some of them, like today's one, which is all of our most simple paintings are at the very top. The more complex ones start here at zero one, and we can work our way down. But if you're just uh, beginning, um, you can attempt these much simpler paintings at the top here. So we look here in this folder, and you're gonna see there's a whole bunch of files in here because again, it's it's Matisse week. So we're starting with some of the most simple ones. And then here's the images that we're looking at here, kind of halfway in the middle. So we have two versions of the outline, one's a JPEG, one's a PDF, and then of course the original image itself. So let's, uh, let's get this image onto the canvas and then we'll talk about um, the next steps, okay? So I'm gonna play this video and I'm gonna talk over top of it while it plays, uh, if it plays. <laughs> okay, so I'm using a nine by 12 sized canvas board. And then there's my image that I've printed out. And I've been using these nine by 12 canvas boards for a couple of years now. There's some links to get the, the ones that I prefer that I recommend in the description below. You can order them directly from Amazon. They're a little, they're $2 each as opposed to a dollar from the dollar store. And I think they are definitely twice as good in terms of quality. Okay, you can see I use some carbon paper. You can use graphite paper and you should be able to get that from any art supply store. And again, there are links in the description below if you want to order directly. And I'm just using a pen to go over these lines and it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so, oh, and there's a little signature. So I'll just let this ride out now. Again, before you take the tape off, it's a good idea just to double check and make sure that everything that you want to be there is actually there, that you're not missing something like that shape right in the center, right, of the chest here, the heart. And we can look, looks good. We can take that tape off. And then what I like to do is I like to save the tape, or not the tape, the template, because I'm gonna use this again for a second painting. So here's the one that you just saw me creating on camera. And then I've got a second blank one that I'm gonna use for cutting paper out and gluing onto this surface, All right? So we're gonna do two versions that are gonna be almost identical. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to do this one. So now that we've got our image onto the canvas, Let's, come on, get the imprimatura, right? So the imprimatura traditionally is where we put a colored ground, which is usually a warm, uh, earthy brown. Um, and I have been using almost exclusively a warm yellow to do this process over the past few years. Now I'm just, I've been over the past uh, couple days just really trying to decide how I want to approach today's painting. So um, let me think out loud. I think both of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a warm yellow ground on. In fact, actually, before I go too much further, I just want to let you know that when I talk about the colors that I'm using for throughout today's episode, these are the actual colors and I've divided them into warm and cool temperatures. So when I refer to a warm blue, this is what I'm talking about. We're uh, right here, warm blue or a cool blue. This is what I'm talking about. Now, you don't need to use these if you don't want to because there's different brands that I encourage you that you can use, whether it's Golden, Liquitex, you can pause these and, and do a screenshot. I've also got all this information on the Dropbox in the, I think the first folder in the Artist Loft. That's from Michael's Art Supply. That's their uh, brand. Buzz, Peebo, Holbein, Dyler Rowney, 
right? So lots of different brands that you can use for this particular process. Okay, so let's get some paint on the palette and then we'll kind of think about, um, actually, you know what? Let's, let's put this on here. Okay, so I'm going to put that in my water. I forgot to get my water. One second. Okay. Oops, maybe a little bit too much water. That's good. Okay, let's give this a quick stir. Actually, now that I'm just realizing I'm going to do two of these canvas, maybe having a little bit extra water. will be good. Okay. So I, this is the only time I ever use water when I'm making an acrylic painting. This is basically what we're doing is just staining the canvas. All right, we're staining it with a color so that uh, it's going to give this painting a nice little glow. Okay, which one? Should, let's just start this one here. Doesn't matter which one we do. Again, you could just do one of these. You don't have to do both of these canvases if you don't want to. You just choose the one that appeals to the process that appeals to you most. And that's why, you know, some, I know a lot of people don't actually watch these videos as I'm recording them live. They wait till afterwards and then they <laughs> sort of skip ahead through them to kind of get to the end. And then they decide, well, that's actually, that turned out not bad. I think I'll do that one, which doesn't bother me at all. just getting the edges here this paint is maybe a little bit thinner than normal I guess because I just put so much more water I didn't actually add more paint so it's it is more transparent than it typically is again not a big deal but just something I'm noticing I noticed pretty quick I'm like oh yeah that's what's happening isn't it Trying to get rid of some of the, those lines on there. Okay, that's good. One done. Here's the other one. Hmm, look at everyone tuning in. There's Lolly and Paula. That's awesome. I guess this is a much better time for Lolly than the typical t starting time so it's it's still late overseas but it's not midnight overseas right so okay just quickly get these edges as i like to do So the one, this one here, I'm going to use tape to execute, and the other one I'm going to use the cutout paper. So with this one, I'm going to approach it a little bit differently 
they're going to start both of these paintings will diverge from this place going forward okay that's good oh and there's tanya as well lots of comments here so i'll take a look in a moment okay let's get that out of the way and let's move this out of the way um. <laughs> So, let's, um, I'm, I think I'm, you know what, actually, um, usually I just stop when we talk about the artist biography right now, since I'm going to, I want to do, I want to continue actually moving on at this stage. And so I'm going to blow dry these actually do the next little step right now before we move on so I'm gonna mute So I think this hair dryer is on its last legs. You couldn't hear anything, obviously, and you probably can't see anything, but it was speeding up and slowing down. So, I mean, I got this thing used from a like uh, Salvation Army, so it doesn't surprise me that it's, you know, not, uh, um, it's, you know, it's it's probably lived a life before it got to me already, but to smell like it's uh something it's but it's on its last leg i'll have to get a new hair dryer tomorrow or tonight okay so uh, i see in the comments um a couple of people asking you know why are we making two paintings we're doing two of the same painting we're just doing it two different ways so we're going to do this painting one with tape and then one with cut out paper glued onto the canvas so that's i'm just going to show two separate techniques to get the same way we've you know it's nothing particularly new if you've been watching me for a while you've seen me do these two different techniques many times but there obviously there's lots of people who, who are watching me for the first time so with this one um with this one i'm very okay so 
How about, let me, I gotta think about that one. <laughs> this one, however, I know what I wanna do is I wanna make it go blue. We're just gonna make it go completely blue. So I'm gonna paint blue right over here and then we're gonna cut paper out and glue it onto this surface. So to get this blue, this is like a cool blue with a little bit of white in it. Depending on how, how we'll see. I'm not sure exactly how, how dark we're gonna make it, but uh, so. Some paint on the palette here. very conflicted with the way that I want to, with these two paintings, and my, oh, there's my white, why am I, I'm sitting here looking for this color, okay, actually, let's just get rid of So, let's take a bit of white. I have a suspicion I might need to do this twice, so let's see. Now again, you could have just skipped right over this and put this blue down first, but I always just like the way that these colors look where there's a little bit of other color hiding underneath. So, and even though, you know, I could um, at this stage just sort of try to do a little bit of um, like leave, like since there's going to be a black stripe right down here, this, I could try to do only the, the, the sides of the painting, right? So to try to just, but you know what? I've learned the hard way many, many doing this kind of thing many times is that it'll be one of those things where there'll be a little gap that I forgot to do and that's gonna shine through and that's gonna drive me absolutely bonkers. So the only, there's no real drawback to doing the whole thing. If anything, what it's going to do is is help um, uh, make the, the whole canvas just smoother. Oops. So you can see this color is a little bit lighter than the original. And that's because I put a bit of white into this baby blue. And I can see a little bit of yellow coming through. At the moment, it's not, it's barely noticeable, barely probably noticeable on your end as well. However, as the paint dries, it's probably gonna get a little bit more transparent. So I'm more than likely gonna do a second coat of this and maybe even put a little bit of warm blue into that color. Right, because if we see them side by side here, you'll notice that these colors look much different all of a sudden. So, we'll, we want to try to obviously get a little bit closer to the original. So this is just what I've painted so far is just cool blue with a little bit of white, right? But the color that he used here is is a little bit more of a um, a. Uh, A cobalt blue. Okay, so let's do something a little bit different here. What I want to do is I'm going to start painting these stars in, and I'm going to paint them in with my cool yellow. Okay. 
So the fact that there is that warm blue underneath is totally fine. It's just going to, uh, if anything, help give this yellow just that little bit of a deeper quality. That's probably that signature will get covered up here. So. Just trying to think to myself about how I want to approach this. So what I'm going to do is tape on top of the yellow and then we're going to paint blue around it. I was thinking about doing the exact same thing. The thing is, obviously, if I painted the blue over top of everything, I, all these lines would be obliterated. So, my only sort of mini worry is that now it's going to appear as if the, the blue is maybe in front of this uh, yellow, because it, there's be a slight ridge above here which I think will make more sense when we get to that point and we peel that tape off. But Oh, it's Lolly's birthday tomorrow. Oh, well, we'll celebrate. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow's another uh, painting by Matisse. Just clean up, up my brushes as I go here. Um, so yeah, what I'm thinking about, should I paint this white? Because when I put the tape on, so hard. When you do this sort of tape um, process, there's always, it's, you, 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 you You'd be surprised at how complex it is when you when you're doing when you'd explain to people it's oh yeah it's gonna be really straightforward and then you try to do it and you think hmm that's more difficult than I was expecting because if I paint this all white right now I'll lose those lines and it's gonna be really hard to find them but let's let's do that anyway right let's just to, or should we paint the black because I'm going to obliterate this anyway let's do this I don't know don't know if this was the smart way of going about it now obviously you can just paint these shapes directly in. you don't need to use tape at all to do today's painting I just was thinking, you know what, like the last, I've, I did a few paintings on Monday, um, versions that were all painted versus ones that used tape and collage, and I just wasn't so happy with those results. I just sort of found like, obviously the ones that were hand painted were inferior, at least in my mind, to the, to the ones that I used cut out paper for, so which was you know, I wanted just to show people that you can do it, and then I think, I think it's pretty straightforward. Everyone kind of understands that you can just paint it in. So people are probably like, "Well, let's show me some a different technique." Then, so we'll see. We'll see how this works. It's always everything's a work in progress. So really what I'm just doing right now is I just want to ensure, just like these stars, there's a, enough space around here for because um, I'm going to have to use the template back over top of this and I don't want to peel the tape off and there's going to be, oh no, I forgot to do the foot down here, it doesn't have any white and then i got to hand paint it. 
Okay. So, I'm going to blow dry this, and I'm probably going to do a second coat of both of these here right now before we, we move on. Wow, that <laughs> hair dryer is definitely pretty much dead. It was just sputtering there towards the end. Um, okay. So how about let's kind of get this blue a little bit closer to where we want it to be. And... I guess... You know what, I'm going to actually put the yellow on here first, because that can start drying. I might have to just run and get the hair dryer that I use for my mustache uh, while all of this dries. So here, I'm just going to put another layer of this cool yellow. Okay, so we'll let that dry. You can see how it's still quite shiny there. So let's let's mix our blue here that we're going to use. Just and I'm just going to put a little bit of this warm blue in there. And I think that's going to get us a little bit closer to um, this here. So if we just look at these two side by side while I mix them. That color on its own is pretty close. Let's just take a bit of warm blue. You know, there is still, I, I'm mixing right over top of the color that was there, so there might be a little bit of white getting introduced, which I don't mind.
that's a great, good looking color if I've ever seen one. So it's a little bit patchy in a few different places. If I wanted to get it even closer, I could just do another coat of this. And I think we'll, we'll, we'd be closer. Again, the color's going to change a little bit as the paint dries, right? That's just very typical with painting. So that the, those lines are just the ridges where we've got the light hitting so I always try to get rid of some of that now the acrylics going to the, the texture is going to disappear as that color um, as the paint self levels that's great okay so I'll set that aside and now maybe while all of that is drying get some paint or paper prepped here. Okay, so to, in order to do this um, uh, collage technique, I'm going to use some watercolor paper. The advantage of watercolor paper is it's thicker and it absorbs water really well without wrinkling, right? So you can you can buy water I've got let's say you know for the comic book that I've been drawing I've, I've been painting on larger sheets of of handmade watercolor paper and then I just so this is just a test piece it gives you an idea you know if you like that kind of ruffled edge look you can do that this is just comes in a block here this Canson I think I'm going to use two pieces so I'm gonna use it like that, okay? So you can, you can see why I just wiped that down. I just want to try to avoid getting color on my paper that I don't want there. Okay. So for this image, for the cutout one, we're gonna that's the the blue background we just painted, so we don't need a blue color. But we would like to have some of these yellow stars. And we'd like to have a... What are we going to do? Yeah, we'll do a, 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 a black uh, line like this. And then we're going to do a red heart. And then the outline of this white figure here. Oops. So that means we're going to use our template here to do a few things. So one of which is what I'm going to do is use the template, but I'm going to turn it backwards and I'm going to trace over the other side. I'll show you why, because that way, so how about let's, let's do, well, I'll show you one of them. We'll do the, the, the person first. And I think it'll be pretty clear why I'm using this process. So let's figure out where we want this to go. Um, we can get pretty close to this edge here. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, so I know this 
probably is like, why, why are we doing it like this? That's the original side. I, I'm not sure how visible it is, but you, there's the, the sort of embossed quality of the pencil lines going in the other direction. Let's put this under here. And then I'm going to trace over. Actually, before I go too much further, I just want to make sure there's not a big splotch of color from the table on here. Again, that's why I wanted to make sure it was nice and clean. Did that pretty pretty dark certainly didn't need to press that hard um, so that's the figure let's see what else let's do the stars while I'm right here moving the paper around because I can, right? There's no need for them to be all spaced out. Two more stars and then the heart. The trick will be to try to remember which stars go in which places, but uh, that can be kind of fun. Okay, so all the stars, let's do the heart. We'll put the heart much further down, down here. So, um, 
know what? Let's let's while I've got all of this here, let's do the the black as well. Just get that get all this over with right now. Let's do it this way. This, this one's black, so I don't have so much to worry about if I... But uh, I'm glad that happened on this one. Okay, so we'll put that to the side. Carbon paper we can put away. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this figure right out. I'm also going to make it just to maybe a little bit wider than the original. Just that way if I want, you know, it's just always easier to <laughs> make things smaller when it comes to collage than to make things bigger, right? Now, one of the cool things with the way Matisse did this is, well, actually, you can't really see in this one, but he, he actually often cut um, multiple pieces of paper and join them together. Sometimes it's hard when you got all that paper around, so let's just, it's easier to kind of make it a little bit smaller. So that's, now I can flip it over, and now I don't have any black outlines or anything. It's it's uh, nice and clean at this moment, <laughs> but uh, that's sort of a little bit of a trick to, to get it, whereas opposed to having it like this, where then I have to worry about those lines, right? So there's one. This is my Icarus figure. Let's just move him out of the way. And then now I have this sheet of, of uh, watercolor paper. This down here is going to be red and all that's going to be yellow. So let's just... Um, I'm going to keep it together. So I just know that... Um, So this is all going to be yellow up here, and this is going to be red down there. And then this one here is my black. Might as well just get these all prepped. And I can 
can save this for another occasion, right? So, what colors do I want to use? Uh, for the yellow, we're going to use the same cool yellow we used before. Now, I, this is going to be look a little bit different than this because instead of putting warm yellow and then yellow on top and warm yellow and then cool yellow, we're just going straight to the cool yellow. If I really wanted to make them consistent, then I would paint them in this using the exact same approach, right? So you know, we after these are done, we can compare them and go like, oh, that's interesting. It looks like. That cool yellow did actually, it looks fine just as it is. Or you might say, wow, that's a good reason to paint on a white canvas without the imprimatura on there. It's up to you. Uh, also, the reason why I'm doing this, you know, I someone might say, why not just cut all those stars out first that would work pretty well but the thing is you can see this is watercolor paper and it's made to absorb pigment really well and it's still warping quite significantly so that's not usually I mean like it's not a huge problem but just since I'm gonna be trying to glue these things in a few minutes you know maybe 20 minutes from now the the less curves that I have to deal with, the just the little bit easier my life will be. So I'll just put that down there to dry. And while that's drying, oh, I needed to do the red, didn't I? Oh, that's just completely curved up. Let's just put this right there. Uh, yeah, John asked what app do I use for outlining and Tanya's right. I trace them out using the procreate app on my iPad Pro So I'm actually gonna use black I don't often use black But uh, it makes sense today just to kind of keep things moving and because this is quite clearly an actual black um, background here so I'm gonna take just this black And then of course, you know, once these dry, we can just evaluate them, make sure that, that the color is as solid as we want it to be, and it doesn't have any um, 
areas that are semi-transparent. Not that that's necessarily a problem, but you know, I think it would probably be nice that more opaque they are. mostly I do like having a clean work surface but especially when I'm doing this kind of thing where I'm gluing and I just want to try to avoid that transfer of color from table to the finished artwork Okay, moving right along. So I feel sort of like I'm a, a chef doing five meals simultaneously. <laughs> um, so uh, that means we're going to work on this next. So this is the one we're using tape on. Um, so a few things, just which is the, the best way here? I do have other tapes that I could use for this. Do I want to? Um, maybe I'll save that for another episode. So, do I guess what I'm trying to think is if I put this down here, I'm not going to be able to see the figure at all. So I'm just debating in my mind whether I should paint that even more white and a totally, yeah, let's totally obliterate this here. You know, it's one of these things, you, whoa, let's see if I can. You try to outsmart a painting and it, it, it's just impossible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't used. Uh, I just have a regular hair dryer for mu my mustache. <laughs> I haven't used that yet, John. Um, okay. 
Okay, while that's drying, uh, let's do the stars then. Let's make sure those are dry. Looks about as dry as it's going to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut out and keep the yellow stars. Yeah. Okay, so let's just burnish all of this down. I gave all that enough time to dry. So where should we start? The interesting thing about the way that Matisse did these is that 
Um, you can see from the original how some of them are really, like all of this is just pinned on here. And then I'm not exactly, I, I, there's a, the process that he used for this I've never heard before. So I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of photographic process to make different um, screens in different, you know, a, a yellow and a blue and a black. Um, Cause this is the original. And as I said, this jazz was reproduced um, as a book. So, and you can get jazz should be able to get it from most like any bookstore you know it was very popular and you know I've seen the original that was printed in collaboration with a master printer is a little bit harder to find um, and very expensive but you know, let's just let's gonna peel these stars off just because it probably will help people get an idea of maybe slowly where we're heading to here. Goodness gracious, see that's still wet. Ah, let me see, can I rescue that? Not bad. That's another reason to get that other blow dryer. Usually I would have blow dried that so it was nice and set before I started doing other things like this over top of But what are you gonna do, right? That one wasn't working for me, so I'm just going to take it right out. We're just going to have a slightly different star there than the original.
you know, it just occurs to me that there's potentially some of these black lines that I traced on here are going to survive all the way to the very end, and I will see them when I peel off all this paint. Which is not necessarily a catastrophe, but it might, you know, again, if this was something, if I was thinking a little bit further ahead, I might have been able to plan for that, and I could have just done this entire tape process on a on a blue canvas without and, and just traced the stencil directly on top of the tape as I did the other day um, but this is also just a good reminder that whenever you're making a painting like if especially if it's gonna be a larger painting and it's gonna take you a long time the benefit of doing a smaller version of it not only is it something that you can sell afterwards, but it helps you really work through the process and kind of figure out how you're gonna actually make that painting and solve any kind of potential issues that come up along the way. Because, as I said, you know, no painting ever turns out exactly the way you want from the moment you begin it. There's always going to be some kind of surprising little detour that occurs at some point. And while you can try to plan for that, I think the best approach is just to know that that's going to happen and just think about how you're going to deal with it when it does happen And I could be proved wrong here at some point where when I peel the tape off after I got the blue in here, maybe it's gonna turn out that having done, that maybe I should have, like just the, when, the way that the paint peels off, that I should have been peeling the stars off and not the background off. Um, but we'll never really know until we're done until we see how that works and then, obviously depending on my results you can modify your own process from here The other thing, you know, ideally, you know, a canvas is is maybe not the best material for doing this kind of thing. A a board, like a wood surface, would would be ideal because, you know, canvas you can certainly cut through the canvas this way, and um, you know, which you've seen that happen on on my versions, and that can be a bit of a pain. So, you know, if we were doing this on like a wood panel, like this, we don't have to worry about cutting too far, or too deep of lines, because the wood is going to maintain its integrity. The, the canvas, we could cut a, accidentally cut a hole right through, and then you've got a hole in there, and that can be really devastating okay so again I'm just gonna burnish 
all of these edges now. And then we're going to put some medium. Ideally, this white, that's still wet. Ah! That's going to slow this process down. So I might have to go get that other hair dryer because I just. Can't wait all day for paint to dry when I'm doing a live broadcast. Let me just see if I if this thing is going to work again. So maybe I'll just set this to the side and let it dry, and let's just take a look at these, see how all well these have done. So these look like they're almost dry. It is interesting that as the, the paper sits there and dries, the curves that were initially in there start to, to lessen. All right, so they used to be very curvy, especially this one here. If you're... Um, okay, so I'm just going to get that other hair dryer to speed up this process. And I'll be right back. One second here. Let me see, let's put this back up there so you can see that. Much better hair dryer, so let's use this one here.
Okay, so that works much better. Having a proper hair dryer again. So I'm gonna let this the uh, let's see. So this here, you know, I painted this white and I put a pretty thick coat of paint on it. So I really want this to be as dry as possible before I start putting some tape on it. Because I'm a little bit worried that even though you know I can touch it and no paint's coming off my fingers, that I'm afraid that it might be a little still a little wet underneath. So I want to let that dry as long as possible. And since I've got two paintings on the go simultaneous here, that's that's uh, okay because I still have other work to do elsewhere here, right? So let's cut. Well, actually, so I have to blow dry this as you know. Um, yeah, so let me just give this a blow dry quick, too. side by side here. Uh, let's go back a little more. Okay. So what I, I I'm totally happy leaving this like I'll glue this down and keep this going off the, the top of the canvas. I'll just let it sit like that. Let's see this figure that'll get glued right in there and then I've got to cut the rest of these shapes out and arrange them on there okay so maybe let's just do this now I am my hands are really dirty I think most prudent thing would be just to wash my hands really quickly before I just start because one thing is is that these are pretty dirty in fact let's just trim these into separate pieces that'll just make my life easier when I'm cutting them Will I remember which one goes where? No, I, that's going to be tricky. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to wash my hands really quickly. That makes a huge difference, right? Okay. 
So again, I have the choice as I'm cutting these out, I can make them maybe a little bit bigger than they were before. For no other reason than it's just they're they're gonna stick better, there's more surface for glue. And as I always say, it's easier to make trim these down and make them smaller than if I accidentally make something too small, making it bigger would be really tricky. I'm possible. As I said earlier, Matisse had assistance helping him do just that at different times, but there's one of them. Right, it looks beautiful on that blue background. So it remains to be like at, at the moment, my thinking is that this piece is going to look m by far the best, and it's also going to just, you know, in terms of technique, be very close to the original. So. Um, that ha that's what it has going for it, but you know because the other the tape one I've had a few little difficulties so far. So sometimes you know it's just human nature to kind of feel like a little. Oh, that's a little bit of a bummer, but you know that's why they play the games because you never know who's gonna win until the very end, and it's entirely possible that another half hour from now I might be freaking out about how <laughs> this one is turning out and celebrating how the other one turned out One thing that, you know, we can take a look at the other paper collage that we did on Monday, how that turned out. And there was, you know, I not, wasn't surprised, but, but um, some of the matte medium kind of squeaked out underneath from, and kind of pooled a little bit in a few places. And not super happy with that result. I mean, it's super subtle to the point where probably most people, like, most people wouldn't notice it. Certainly, probably, it doesn't even show up on camera much, if at all. But, you know, I think that's one of the things as artists, we get fixated on the details of our artwork. And you show it to other people, and they're like, sorry, what's the problem? What am I looking for? And it's like, don't you see how how there's a discoloration here and and they're like yeah I guess like, is, is that oh I thought that was I guess part of it that's you don't like that no I hate it oh I, I actually don't mind I think it's kind of cool right so um, You know, one of the reasons why a lot of artists tend to have the same style for an extended period of time is it often takes like a, a while for an artist to sort of figure out the best way to do what they want to do. So, you know, it's just like any manufacturing process, right? Like, you know, you get better at something the more you do it. And so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to switch, you know, as soon as you figure it out, just to move on to something else. Now, many of the most famous artists of all time did just that, which is what sort of makes them so remarkable, is that as soon as they figured out how to do what made their artwork so good in the first place, they just moved right on. 
but there are examples in art history where that could potentially be disastrous, right? I mean, those look really nice like that, so... At the moment, I'm very pleased. So the way that I'm doing this is is basically, you know, it certainly takes longer than if we were doing this with like little kids. We could do a much more simplified version of this, which I have done many times. I, talk, I think I talked about that on Monday, is that for when I've worked with little kids, we've done many Matisse-inspired artworks because his work really lends itself to that. are all my yellow stars. And now let's do the heart. Also, other materials that you can use for gluing, we could use spray glue. I do have spray glue, which I've used before. Um, that's probably going to, would cause the least amount, or that wouldn't cause any leakage on the other side. The only thing with spray glue is that it might not be quite as archival. It might, might uh, peel off at some point. Okay, so let's just sort of generally put these in place. Let's see if we can figure out which ones go where. Um, that kind of looks like that might be that there. I think this one's down here. I think that goes there. There. So I think generally that's about where those go. So we could just start gluing this down right now. Um, but I think since we now kind of know where that goes, we could move on to the other one and get this one rocking. Okay. So we've got this taped. Hopefully this white is as dry as it's going to get. we paint this all blue should I, I could wait a second that's two different shapes so this it probably makes sense to paint all of this blue now then to tape this off this blue so put tape here and on the figure and paint that black okay sorry yeah that makes just it is a bit of a mind warp here <laughs> trying to, so let's mix up our background color again this cool mostly cool blue Okay, let's 
get some of this. Oh, and you know what? we've got to put a little bit of white in here as well. Oh, I forgot I needed to put the matte medium. There's always something, isn't there? So I'm just going quickly because I want to get these paintings done ASAP here. So we'll see how well this turns out considering the speed of which I'm doing it. It's not 100% dry. Just trying to decide if it's dry enough. Obviously, we'd want it to be as dry as possible before we move on, but just because I'm in a bit of a hurry here, I'm just going to launch right into this here. So I'm going a little bit over top of where the black will go.
And just like the previous one, I'm going to blow dry this. Now, I do have a little bit of white in here. This, this one's probably going to be a little bit of a lighter blue than the other. But that's just, um, that's just how the cookie crumbles today, I guess, right? So I'm, let's blow dry. Okay, so let's do this um, again. Here's my warm blue. Let's get a bit more cool blue. I'm just going to take all of this blue that was there. It's going to give us maybe not quite as deep of a blue as the other one. But... more than happy by the time it's done this I mean especially you know if these are side by side then yeah this one will be noticeably lighter right but they're probably not gonna be side by side um, so in that case I don't mind if there's a little difference I'm also going you know much faster than I really should be to do this and that's likely gonna result in a little bit of paint sneaking underneath this tape which is gonna be a bit of a bummer when I reveal it but uh, you know if, if I was doing if I there's always a way to do it much better um, but when we're trying to do two paintings in like an hour, what this will be like two and a half hours by the time we're done today. You know, you just have to temper your expectations, right? I mean, oops, see there's that darker blue sneaking out. I don't mind that darker blue. It just, obviously, it'd just be nice to have things cons I'm more concerned that the painting is consistent. Most people aren't gonna go like, oh, looks like you got the blue wrong, buddy. They'll more just be like looking at it on its own merits. And So again, I just just show you that they are a little bit different. Not actually not as much as I thought they would be. And it does make me wonder if I should do another second coat of this. I don't, I'm not going to, but I could in order to get a little bit closer. So I'm going to blow dry this and then peel off these stars. And then I'm going to put the tape down for the black. Yeah. Next here. So we'll do... Let's blow dry.
part of me just wants to wait till the very end. Sometimes this peeling of paint can be both uh, I might just let this cool down a bit. Sometimes I find when I'm when you peel this tape off after I've just blow dried it, it's almost like melted plastic and it sometimes just needs to a little bit of a moment to for the paint to chill out a little bit. Hmm. You can see some of that um, those pencil marks underneath there. Let me zoom in on this here. So let me just let that dry, and then I'm going to go do the center part here. How do I want to do that? So, you know, that's not, I mean, that's not ideal the way that, that this tape kind of has come off, but, you know, sometimes I've, I've just, I don't know why, but sometimes the tape just seems to come off better and worse than other times, right?
yeah, that's the way we're gonna have to do it. So, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm curious to see how this is going to turn out. I have some doubts about my method here. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel all of this off. going to be, I'll have to touch that up afterwards. Well, all you can do, see, basically what there's going to be, I was hoping that, you know, there's going to be a little bit of blue paint underneath here where it's supposed to be just white. Same thing down here. Um, again, I, I, that's why I think probably this would be great learning experience for anybody else watching can go like, oh, okay, so he made that mistake there. Okay, that's that's helpful to know and I just won't make that same stupid mistake. 
Um, so I think ultimately it would have been a lot easier if I had just started with actually a fully blue background and then just like I did with the collage version and then just traced the template onto the tape and then cut the tape out. But you never know until you do it, so. And as I've said, like if you were trying to do your own painting, uh, maybe I'm just wondering, should I, what if I just cut this and try to trim, make it a little bit thinner so I don't even have that blue? Is that gonna be? Maybe it'll be a really cool look. I don't know. So let's just let's just uh, live with it, and then we'll see. Maybe there's no problem at all when the paint comes off, right? You never know. And again, I really should be going slower to do this to make sure that I'm not pushing paint underneath the tape edge, but uh, I'd like to wrap up and be totally done in you know, another half hour. So that uh, time is not on my side for this. These processes are a little bit more time consuming. Okay. While this is just starting to dry, I'm just going to clean some of these brushes off so that I have them at my disposal when I need them. As always, I wash all my brushes at the end of the night, even if they're sort of quote unquote clean right now. Um, I take them and wash them with a little bit of soap because they're not, I'm not. Uh, I'm going kind of quickly, so they're not all going to be nice and well cleaned as well as they should be at this stage. So let's blow dry this. Then we're going to apply some black paint all over the interior of this, peel up all of these stars. Ideally, they turn out better than that one because this might mean I have to do a little bit of hand touching. So we'll see. Uh, John asks, what medium am I I'm using? Matte medium. Matte medium is just paint without any color in it. So it's sort of perfect for this because if paint gets underneath these edges, it's going to be just a slight discoloration as opposed to white or, or even this black I'm about to put down on here. take just this is black again I rarely use black but uh, we're just using it today out of kind of necessity for speed and whenever possible trying to kind of go away from the the lines or the tape to try to avoid pushing paint underneath the tape here
that's all on there. Let's just kind of brush it out. Ah, some of the paint got under. I didn't go edge to edge with this tape, so that's we'll just clean that up here in a second. Some of this paint, black paint under here, which I don't want. Just get rid of that. So let's blow dry this again and then we're going to peel off all this paint and then or the tape and then we'll just do the heart in the center and hopefully this will be pretty close to being done maybe we'll, we'll do a little bit of touch-ups Okay, so peel this black paint off. I mean, not, not the end of the world, but you can see there's areas where I just, I, you know, I didn't, there was not enough blue there. I guess because this is supposed to go in the other diagonal direction. And that, you know, I can fix those. Do I want to fix those is the question. Is it really that much of a problem?
see there's that blue that was under there So, you know, when you have these situations, you can, we can either just, uh, you know, take a fine brush and clean up the mistakes, or we can go and do a little bit more taping to kind of fix them. Uh, I mean, it looks really nice and sharp. It's just kind of a bummer that, that there's these edges like that there. And, you know, I, I noticed that as I was doing it, and then it was kind of too late, so. Uh, yikes. Jeez. Stars have not come out as expected. That's very disappointing. I've never really seen this result where it peeled that badly. I, I don't know uh, why. Yeah, I don't know if it's just the the full moon recently. <laughs> So it seems to be if I pick up the corners of these and then peel towards the center, that seems to be the technique, the winning technique. You know, it's like a science experiment. I think, you know, the question is, is it, is, did this happen because the paint was too dry or not quite dry enough.
And again, like I'm being, uh, I'm a little bit discouraged, so I'm just sort of going, being a little bit sloppy here. Whereas if I took a little bit more time, I'd probably have less, they wouldn't look quite as bad as they do. But, you know, it's like one of those things where, you know, once you start noticing that that problem has occurred, kind of like, ah, I guess this is not going to be one of the, the, the keepers, right? There's enough sort of problems with it to um, so let's touch this up Let's just see if we can do a quick and dirty version of this without even using the matte medium. There's a little ridge there, so I'm just trying to get rid of that. Scrape it right off. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so it kind of solved a little bit of some some of those issues. It was bothering me. So at least the black is cleaner. <laughs> One small thing here. <laughs> uh, okay. So actually, hopefully we're done with the black for today. Let's fix the blue. The blue, I'm, I'll have to do hand painting and it won't be quite as kind of clean as you know would be probably desired, but uh, Maybe let's actually let's do a little bit of the white. That would feel good to get that at least one major aspect of this. <sighs> Keep squeezing way too much paint out. that dry for a few moments. While that's drying, let's tackle the blues. He says, note to self, uh, masking method requires layers of paint to cure in between. Yeah, definitely the, the, the longer, like the, the more that the, the, the paint that you're applying the tape to, like ideally that's really nice and dry because if it's still wet, it's going to peel, it's going to stick to the tape, which maybe sounds obvious, but um, <laughs> you know, it's a uh, has been wreaking havoc in my work for years because I get impatient. The other thing that's difficult about doing this after that the tape has been applied is that now I've got these ridges to contend with and it's really hard painting on top of a surface that's really textured like this.
It's one of those things that probably once it's dry is won't be so noticeable and, and probably for a lot of people they won't even notice any of this kind of stuff unless they get right up close. But when your goal is to have something that looks a little bit cleaner than this, it's d definitely d majorly disappointing. Because the whole point of using this tape is to get nice sharp edges. And so when they're not sharp, it's sort of like, well, what was the whole point of all of that? Good question. So I might have to do two coats of this, just depending on... This seems a little bit transparent right now. The other thing, I mean, there's all of the pencil marks from below. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that right now. Part of me... You know, my original instinct is like, yikes, I don't like that at all. But then there's a bit of me that kind of feels like it, it looks kind of cool. Like the, it's like the, often artists will leave the underdrawing visible. Cleans up pretty good. Do the black. I mean, I there is a part of me now that's really tempted to just actually collage the heart onto this one as well, rather than using tape. Because it's like, well, why not? Like, I mean, it would certainly go a little bit faster and more likely to get or not more likely it's just it's the likelihood is greater that it'll be clean and sharp I mean like I mean that uh, what do I mean it's just considering some of the problems I had so far here it's a bit more of a sure bet, I guess. But let's just see here. Let's.
I mean, I guess at this point, you know, some of the, the, the worst aspects of this painting have seemed to kind of evaporate a bit. We've kind of rescued it, which is very satisfying, right? And it's always a good reminder that um, that it's don't give up on a painting because there's always a possibility of salvaging something. Okay. So let's just take a look at how this one has turned out. I mean, especially when we zoom out, that's not bad, right? Just considering, you know, I mean, if we just saw this right now without seeing some of the struggle that I, that I went through when peeling some of the tape off, you'd probably be pretty happy. Most people would be probably pretty happy with that. Um, so let's do the heart. Dare I use the tape again? Let me think. Okay, so I'm going to blow dry all of this, and then I think I am going to put some tape to try to do the heart in the center one final time and see if I can salvage this, right? Okay, so let's get the heart in place. Let's look at the other one here side by side. Where did I put my carpet paper? Oh, here we go. 
I mean, I could have just drawn that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think it's also helpful to see how this, how we can do this. Let's scratch this. So I'm going to paint red inside here, so I just want to peel off the tape inside. bit of matte medium here. So I was just putting a little bit of white paint in there simultaneously because when I was scratching the tape off, I kind of made a few little scratches in there that were a little bit dark. And I just, by putting a little bit of white paint on there, it's just gonna hide those things, so it's not a problem. Taking some of this warm red, I'm going to do two layers of this, so I'm just going to blow dry again. Okay. 
Let's just get a little bit of a deeper red. And this is all the red paint, by the way, that I was going to wipe off on my brush from when I painted the previous version. So I just kind of scraped it onto my palette and now I can use it again. So. Um, let's see if I can, instead of blow drying it again, got to be careful you don't get this tape There, now that's <laughs> much cleaner. That's how you do it. Um, you know, it's there's probably a case to be made that because I was trying to do all of these shapes all at the same time, rather than just doing maybe one area at a time, that that's why I got the, the results that I did in the stars around there. But I also don't mind that so much that the little bit looseness of you know I don't know I, I gotta think about it I'm not not super it's kind of growing on me I guess I should say so maybe um, let me just blow dry that just, just before I do it Okay, now I'm going to put Matisse's signature on here using the template. Which is kind of cheeky, but I just I find that kind of funny. So... It's very, very subtle, barely visible, and this is really warped too. Again, these are the not the canvas boards that I recommend for this precise reason. After being blow dry, I mean, table I guess is also <laughs> kind of bulged a bit. Um,
<laughs> you know, so I could do a little bit more touching up in the blue here, but I think that's probably fine. Right, I think that version there, I think we'll, we'll set this aside and we'll take a look at the other one now because at this point, we're just gonna glue all of these shapes down and then we'll call it a day. <laughs> so, here. So we'll do our finishing touches and then maybe if my daughter keeps sleeping, we'll, we'll take a look at a little bit more of the of the uh, jazz book and some of the other images here, but let's just get this finished. Okay. So to get all this glue down, you know what, I'm just gonna move my paints out of the way because I wanna do gluing and I'd like to have a clear space for this. As soon as I don't need a material, it's just best just to get it out of the way so that I have a clear workspace. So let's move our each little thing off to the side here. Now this I'm going to kind of eyeball. You know, we have the original here. I should also say that, you know, actually, let's look at this other one. This is the previous one that we did. And so what I did is I glued this down and I used matte medium, which is clear paint. And it did a great job. For the most part, it's really, there was only a few places where, where the paint sque like squeezed out from underneath the paper. And it kind of created these slight discolorations. Now I did see John earlier on, one of the Johns, <laughs> I can't remember which John it was, say he, he mixes p color into the glue or just uses paint as a glue. And I'm going to use paint as a glue, matte medium as opposed to white glue or Mod Podge, because this should do pretty much the same thing. Might not be quite as strong of a bond, but I think it's, it's certainly going to work we've I've done it many times before so I'm not concerned about that the only thing is is let's say I put you know uh, let's say you put black paint literally on the back of this and glue it down onto here because it's going to go onto the surface right I put black paint on here that will help keep this black really nice and intact. But let's say I get a little bit of paint on my fingers as I'm doing this, right? And I position it, and then I get a black mark right there. Or as the paint squeezes out, and then sometimes it often comes back over top. That could be, you know, quite upsetting. So at least here, if I'm using clear... Um, this clear matte medium what happens is that happened a lot all over here and you can i don't know if you can even really see it which is the goal right there are places i'm trying to see if i can get a reflection on camera i don't even think i can make that visible but there's there's lots of little places where the 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 matte medium came up over top and if you can imagine this, if I had used purple paint to do this, it would be probably pretty upsetting. 
Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm also going to put a book over top of this to help like flatten it all down. And you know, this is not going to be satisfying on camera, but the, the most prudent thing for me to do would actually be to glue this black down first. Let that dry overnight and then take it off and glue maybe the figure and the heart down next. Let that dry overnight and then do all of the stars later because what's going to happen the minute I start putting uh, the matte medium onto the back of this for instance right now it's curving up what it's going to want to do is do the opposite it's going to want to kind of curl the other way so I'm going to really want to get the uh, books that I, and weights on top of here ASAP to help that this stay glued down and if I try to rush it then it, all, all of that glue squeezing out around the edges is just going to be amplified and then I'm going to start getting glue on my fingers I get to start getting those cold sweats you know so I think um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this in a little bit of a slower process where it's not going to be satisfying end to today's episode but you'll see ideally you know I'll do a little bit more work on this tonight and then we can kind of review at the beginning of tomorrow's episode um, how it turned out. And we'll reveal it at the beginning of tomorrow's episode. Okay, so let's uh, put a little bit of matte medium on this. So I'm going to glue, put matte medium on the back here. And let's get the supplies to our weights ready. So I'm going to use, these are some canvas boards that I've ordered for future episodes. So we'll have these so I can stick them right on top right away. And you know, it's maybe also just worth mentioning too, another thing that I discovered, which is a little disappointing see if I can get this to be visible the wax paper now this could just be because I'm using whack cheap wax paper from the dollar store but I noticed it it looks like it didn't stick but it left like a little bit of like a shiny residue I know that maybe that's just wax you can see it up there let's see if I can get make it visible in this okay oh there it was for a second you see this ridge right that's also from a book that I had sitting on top of this surface so that was really surprising I've tried erasing that I don't know I could try using a cloth to try to gently wipe some of that off but I want to try to avoid that from happening again so one of the things that I'm gonna do this time around is not only glue this down but I'm also going to put a little bit of paper kind of on either side here just so that the the surface of the of the painting is protected from the wax paper so that the wax paper is really only being used to prevent the books from sticking to the canvas right so that's what I'm going to do here now I can use just about anything to do this. Let's um, I'll just use some of my these were the, the templates from before. Maybe I'll use this one. Actually, I'll, let me get the paint on here and then we'll get that ready. Okay. So, and my wax paper.
Okay, let's move this out of the way nice and carefully. Make sure I don't got paint all over my fingers. And there's some of this matte medium has already squeezed out on top of the black. bigger book. So we'll let this sit ideally overnight but at least for a couple of hours enough to get it uh, um, cured uh, and then once that's dry then I'm gonna put on those fellows right and then do this again so it's that's let's um so we just have <laughs> this one to take a look at then I guess for our comparison Okay, so we're going to wrap up here. We're going to take a look at both of the, or at least one version here, side by side. And then we'll take a look at, at the, again, at the beginning of next, of tomorrow's episode. Uh, but just before we, we close up for the shop for the night, just remember to like, subscribe to the channel. Upload your version of today's painting or anything else you're doing to the Facebook group. In a couple of weeks, we'll take a look and celebrate all the great work you've done. If you think today's episode was worth a, a dollar or two, you're certainly welcome and invited to make a small donation via PayPal or the Super Chat here on YouTube. Send a check or e-transfer as well. So thank you for all of your continued donations. I really sincerely appreciate that. That's why I'm still doing this a couple of years after I began, right? Okay. So side by side, that's how this one turned out. And, you know, despite some of the difficulties here, I think it's actually turned out pretty good. I mean, there was, you know, there's maybe still little touch-ups that I can do afterwards. Um, but, you know, I think those types of things are, are relatively minor. Like, worse comes to worse, I could, you know, we, we could redo all of this, or I could cut these stars out just like this and glue them right over top and maybe make them a little bit bigger or whatever. I'm not sure if this is the, oh no, this one. I think this one is supposed to go here somehow. <laughs> uh, where does, how does that go? Something almost like that. So that could be kind of fun. You know, so if they don't, if yours don't turn out, you could do something like that to hide them. And then you'd be really close to the original. 
So that's what I say. There's, it's never, you know, a, a lost cause. There's always a way to sort of salvage whatever it is you're creating. Okay. Great. Uh, Lori says, would parchment paper work as a, opposed to wax paper? It should, yeah. In fact, this might even... I'm trying to. Just, I think this might even be parchment paper. I, I, uh, I've th long, long ago thrown the tubes that they were in out just to make a room. Because um, I usually use these for my painting classes when I've I've painted with large groups of people instead of painting on palettes. We just use some of this parchment or wax paper to paint on from the dollar store, and because it's really nice and easy, quick cleanup. Uh, anyway, <laughs> great question, though. That's another science experiment. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thanks for joining me and painting along with me on this special bonus episode. We're going to be back to our normal schedule tomorrow. We're going to be painting another very famous Matisse painting. One of the most controversial paintings that he made. Now, in retrospect, people are what controversy it's just a portrait of somebody but the the green line that was painted right down the portrait that he made of his wife caused an outrage when it was created how dare he disfigure his the the painting of his wife with a green stripe right down the middle of the face sacrilege right let's burn the art museums down can you believe there was a time when a, a painting of someone uh, that wasn't some religious figure could cause such a commotion? Anyway, that's what happened a hundred years ago when Matisse made that famous painting, which we're going to recreate tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit more, not too much more difficult than the one we did yesterday of Matisse's daughter, but I'm confident uh, that even a beginner can pull it off. Okay, everyone, have yourselves a wonderful rest of your evening or morning, wherever you are on our beautiful planet. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Take care, everybody. Good night.